Facebook. That is the single eye. Actually, it's the third eye. Three eye. Single eye. 666. It's three sixes. Six is the number of man. Three sixes is the perfect, complete, immortal man in which we all are. When I say man, I mean mankind. Hey, everybody. I'm going to show y'all. I am at the beach for the week. Thank God. And it's very relaxing. Something to give you a view. That's where my daughter is down there with my parents, my sister and brother-in-law. Uh, and my... There's the beach out there. We've been on the other side. Um, actually, I'll show you. We've been on the, the river lagoon side a lot because the water is crystal clear. Ah, see if I can tag a couple people. If I can figure this thing out. Nope. I missed you, I'm sorry. All right. Hey, I've been thinking about something. Ah, uh, yeah, you're on the reality revolution. That's cool. What's up, Jonathan? Happy birthday, brother. Young man. <laughs> I got a birthday coming up, too. <laughs> so I've been thinking about something. Uh, I put a post up on sin. I'll repost that. And then a, a, and a post on um, God embraced sin. We embraced sin to... Uh, emerge visible <clears throat> so let me just kind of let me lay the foundation um, first off there is absolutely no error no mistake um, nothing is negative everything is perfect and everything is good there's if it, coming from this basis right here if there is only one being okay Allah God the one and only being, then what is every being? What is every life form? If every organism is as life, is consciousness, then what is that organism and what is every life form, if not the one and only being? If there's only one being. So how could anything be in error at all? except we perceive error, which is an illusion. And I've said this many times, the definition of an illusion is a misrepresentation misrepresent of true reality. So standing behind the illusion or the illusion of error or evil is true reality. And you say, okay, well, what is true reality if not the Christ? And is Christ is, is not the Christ God, the one and only being, the one and only anointing of the one and only being? And in the uh, conversational language of Jesus and his disciples, which was Aramaic, they called the Christ Haya, which is conscious life energy. And if you go over to Hebrews, you'll find that faith is the substance that's, that, uh, that stands behind all things. So faith is the substance of things, uh, seeing the evidence of things not seen. I think that's how it goes, something like that. 
So faith is this hypostasis, which in hypostasis means the substance that stands behind all things, the Christ. And because of this substance, we know that the worlds were framed up by the rhema word of God. So we are the perfect image of our source. And we're eternally one, which means we've always been one in and as source and when i say source i'm saying god so if i use god and source uh, inter i'll use it interchangeably but when i say source i'm talking about god when i say origin i'm talking about god and uh you can go back and look at some videos i've done before i don't want to go back through everything but in john 1 i've basically proven that in the beginning in the aramaic is before the beginning and in the greek it's uh, rk which means origin and origin the definition of origin is the source in which all life is derived all life and then when you go down to john 1 3 it says in him was uh no uh, all things it's either one three or one four all things were made through him and not one thing that was made was made separate the word is core uh c-o c-h-o-r-i-s i believe and it's choris i think and it means separate so everything, all things were made through him. And not one thing that was made was made separate from him. So flip that. So not one thing that was made was made separate from him. So all things made were made one with and as him. One. And that word made is ganamahi. In the Greek and it means to emerge or to transition from one realm sphere or plane into another one invisibility made visible out of source into visibility in source emerging visible so we're a we are the perfect image of our source you can say father God Spirit, breath, Holy Spirit, Christ, the universe, divine intelligence, Allah, Allah, origin, um, whatever. So we're this perfect image. So within you, you're made up of all these cells, right? So within source, source is made up of a bunch of, let's just say cells. Let's not get tripped up on these words. Well, now you're making it impersonal. Let's not get tripped up on words here. Within source were a bunch of cells. Within you are a bunch of cells. And you are the intelligence, the power that is behind the intelligence of every cell within you. So your consciousness is actually the intelligence behind the consciousness of each of your cells. And these cells are grouped. So you have certain cells that group together to form your kidneys. And they have the intelligence that forms and runs and does the operations of the kidney. And each cells that form and group um, to make up your heart has the intelligence to form and run and be the heart and then you have a group of cells for your liver and your lungs and your brain and all this stuff but you are the consciousness the intelligence that is actually you could say running all these other consciousnesses within you and the one and there's only one consciousness now which is the one and only being there's only one mind there's only one intelligence, there's only one faith, there's only one love, there's only one Lord, there's only one Father, there's only one. The Lord your God is one. Hear, O Israel, is real. The Lord thy God is one. That's why Jesus said, I and Father are one. When you say I, who is it saying I? I and Father are one. We are. On this day you will know that just as I am in my Father, just as I am my Father, you are me and I am you. What are we saying here? 
Father is all things. Allah is the one and only being. So just as I am all things, you are me and I am you. You are also all things. We are one. So just as I said, there's all these cells that have their own consciousness. They group together to make up like your liver or your kidney. But you are the intelligence behind that consciousness. And then, of course, the consciousness, the one and only consciousness, the universal consciousness of God is all is your consciousness. I'm going to get somewhere here. So in source, we were those cells, just like the cells within us. But the cells within me are not aware. They're not consciously aware of what they're experiencing. They're just being. They're just operating as the consciousness that they are. Just as these cells are not aware of who they are, they're not aware of the experience they're having, they're not aware of the intelligence that I am. They're just doing and being, just as they are. So were we in Source. We were just being unaware, unconscious of the experience that of, of being that we were experiencing. And I like to say unaware and unconscious of the experience of one as, in and as God, of one God, of one. So, Adam and Eve. I think I titled this, Adam and Eve embraced the idea of God, and the idea of God is you. So in him was life, and the life was the light of mankind. So the light of mankind was the life in source, the cells, unaware, unconscious, just being one. And people say, well, what's wrong with that? Well, you weren't consciously being one. So there is no mistake, there is no error. To say that what Adam and Eve did was error or a mistake is to say that you are a mistake. It, this is the root of all evil, is to think that we are not who we are. But, but even through that thought that I am not who I am, even through that thought, that thought is set up so that you will experience who you truly are. So that you'll turn within and find your true self and, ex and consciously experience your true self. So Adam and Eve did not make a mistake. They did not get tricked. They embraced the idea of consciousness. They embraced the idea of God. They embraced the idea of source. So in source, we were all in source because over in Ephesians 1, 4, it says you were chosen, you were selected from in Him. You say, who is Him? You were selected from in Father. You've always been there. You were selected. You were chosen. For what? To be holy and blameless. You were chosen to experience all that you were there. One. You were chosen to experience being. You say, okay, what was I? Experience being what? You were chosen to experience being God. As one, together. So this idea drops down. That there must be another that there is another experience. So Adam and Eve embraced this idea of another experience. You'll be like God. If you do this, you'll be like God. They embrace the idea of another experience. But because there is only one consciousness, the generator of all idea, that very idea 
came from God. So God, in which we all were and are, because I just told you we've always been one. We were in Him, in Source. <clears throat> just as the cells are unaware that they're in me, but they are. They are me, and I am them. So God laid, and I say it because, and please don't get offended by this, God is neither he nor she. God is both he and she. God is neither male nor female. God is both male and female. And who knows, God could be much more than that. God is energy, positive, negative, male, female, energy as one. So God laid its life down, laid its individuality down, forgetting itself, forgetting the experience of one to become vis visible. And through the experience of visibility, of dualism, of separation, through the experience of individuality would turn within through the experience of sin, sin is not negative. We've looked at things so negative. Wrath is not negative. All these words, they're all good. Through the experience of separation, you could say, of not knowing who I am, I would turn within seeking the one, because it's written on our DNA, only to find my true self in me as me. God turns only to find its true self in an individual named Alec, in me, as me, as all. Becoming aware of the oneness, of the one that we are, experiencing the oneness that we were not aware of in source. I hope this is making sense. So the idea drops down from God that there must be another experience. There must be something outside of oneness. There must be, we can be like God. There must be another experience. And as soon as Adam and Eve, as soon as we, male and female energies, as soon as we embraced this idea of visibility, another experience, the vibration lowered. And we put off one sound. And the idea dropped down and was conceived in the divine mind in which we were and are. And the thought fired as electrical light and the light moved as energy and motion, emotion. And the emotion vibrated as a feeling and a sound. And the feeling and the sound manifested as many forms many lights so what Adam and Eve did was not a mistake and if we're saying what they did was a mistake we're saying God is not all known and God did not and God made a mistake and I'm a mistake and the illusion of error is rooted in this thought that what they did what was a mistake because ultimately if I'm saying what they did was a mistake I'm saying I'm a mistake but what they did produced the idea of me, of visibility. So people say, okay, well, what's, what's the reason, Alec? Why? Why? Why would we lay our life down forgetting the experience of one that we're actually unaware of and unconsciously experiencing to turn within finding our true selves in us, as us, experiencing the one that we were back there. Well, that's why. That's why. We are here to become aware and to consciously experience being. You say, okay, what are we here to consciously experience being? We are here to consciously experience being that which we have always been, God. 
We are here to consciously experience God. There is no error. There is no evil. There is no good and bad. Everything that's pointing you to two sides, evil, darkness, devil, demons, hell, heaven, dark, light, is all set up so that you will turn within and you will consciously experience and become aware of one and only one. And that's it. We are here to consciously experience being God. One. And only one. And only one. And you say, okay, what's standing in the way? What's standing in the way is you not knowing the truth that you are the power. You are the way. You are the truth. You are the life. You are I am that I am. You are the Christ. You are God. You are the father of your own times and seasons. You are the holy breath expressed and manifested perfectly. Anything that is telling you or me that I am something less than the source in which I came out of is an illusion. And you say, okay, now that I'm aware and all these experiences, all these consequences, all these uh, things that are happening in my life that don't seem to be serving me for my greatest good, they're all pointing you to a pattern, which is a memory. which started as a thought, which you are here to transmute, ultimately bringing us all into this experience of one and only one. When Adam and Eve, when we became visible, we forgot who we are. But it was all part of the plan because in order to become visible, we had to fully embrace the idea of visibility. Our help me. All for the reason of consciously experiencing all that we were as one invisible. <laughs> Everything. So I hope that made sense. I'm still kind of unpacking this thing. I like to unpack things kind of on the, on the fly on these lives and it just kind of comes as it comes and there'll be more that comes. And <clears throat> if you have questions, Turn within and contemplate and meditate on your questions. You are the power, not the thoughts that you're having. You are the intelligence. You are the generator behind every thought. Ascend through meditation and contemplation. Ascend into your heavenly idea. Grasp, take hold of every idea that we created together before as God. Take hold of these ideas. As ideas are conceived in your mind, they fire as thought, they come forth as emotion, you feel them as vibration, and as you feel them, they manifest as form. This is how reality is created. You created your own reality. 
you may have been unaware of what you created and how you created it because we weren't aware. But when you woke up and all of a sudden you went, I am. I am one. I am creating my reality. Now you have the power. You're not being blown around by the wind. You're not being blown around by the news and the media. You're not being blown around by every idea, this, every thought that's being, that's being presented to you as an appearance, as an illusion of error and evil. I'm not seeing that much error and evil anymore. And the only explanation I can give you is because I'm seeing my true self more clearly. I'm consciously experiencing the one that I am. Now, I will tell you this. I have been dealing with a lot of uh, pain and emotions eternally that have been suppressed, that are, that are coming forth because of the awareness I have of one now. It's the light. So I hope that made sense. If you have any questions, like I said, Contemplate, meditate on your questions. The questions are coming from your true self. They're coming from God. And it's an invitation from God into an intimate conversation and into an encounter and into a revelation revealing the truth within you. Ultimately, moving you forward, so to speak, and, and for lack of words, moving you forward into who you've always been and into consciously experiencing the one that you've always been. Peace. Hope that made sense.